respected chairperson, dear panelists, and dear audience, assalamu alaikum. Let us have a look into mitral regurgitation. Uh, art is long, but time is short. So I have to be short. Just we all know about the basic anatomy and structure of mitral valve apparatus. And eco assessment of mitral regurgitation, we have to look at least three basic things. One is the severity of mitral regurgitation. Another one is regarding the mechanism of mitral regurgitation. And the third one is regarding its hemodynamic impact. This is very important for further management. Now we have to assess the severity of mitral regurgitation. There are so many parameters that can be considered, but practically we are fond of parameters. Only mitral regurgitation jet that has to be studied in terms of size configuration, vena contract and flow convergence. And there are certain indirect evidence like left ventricular size and function, left atrial size and pulmonary pressure. We do not care for PISA and volumetric methods. Uh, I am going to cover these things. Regarding configuration of the jet, we have to be very cautious whenever we are dealing with eccentric jet because sometimes eccentric jet, though apparently looks mild, it may be actually moderate to severe. So please add grade one whenever you are dealing with an, an eccentric jet. Also, you have to think of left ventricular function whenever you are interpreting the jet because in case of poor left ventricular function, the jet may be of lower magnitude. Regarding MR severity, also left atrium should be paid attention because left atrial dilatation is, an, is a surrogate marker for severity of mitral regurgitation in many times. If there is no, this is a telltale sign of severity of mitral regurgitation. I'm going to elaborate this. And the next thing that is very important is to determine the mechanism of mitral regurgitation. That is to some extent difficult and needs much practice. The first thing is to differentiate between primary and secondary mitral regurgitation. Primary means if the MR is due to mitral valve apparatus itself, it may be leaflet, it may be corda or very muscle. And secondary means if it is due to the abnormality of the left ventricle itself. Regarding rheumatic MR, we are, as this is very predominant in our subcontinent, we are accustomed to it, this commissural fusion thickening of leaflets and thickening and shortening of the corda. And if concomitant MS, we are very lucky that we are sanguine regarding the diagnosis. But rheumatic deficiency are the two entities that actually constitute what is called degenerative MR. In case of Barlow's disease, this is actually so much. Uh, uh, thickening of the leaflets and there are multiple segmental prolapse and in case of fibroelastic deficiency usually the uh, segments are thinned out and there is deficiency of the elastic tissue uh, as a whole here is an example of mitral valve prolapse you are seeing that pml is prolapsing leading to mitral regurgitation and this is probably an example of barlow's disease in a patient with marfan syndrome this patient is having just uh, rupture leading to severe mitral regurgitation you are seeing on the right side and at the same time there is aortic aneurysm. This is an example of flail AML. Just you are seeing the part is moving within the interior of the left atrium. This is by definition a flail AML. This is problematic deficiency leading to flail AML. Sometimes in case of especially post MI patients, there may be papillary muscle rupture, as is the case here. And you are seeing the part of the papillary muscle that has been cropped here and leading to an eccentric severe MR. Infective endocarditis, you are seeing mitral valve involvement leading to mitral regurgitation, and the mitral regurgitation is rather moderate to severe here. This is also an example of mitral regurgitation. And here, secondary MR is not very uncommon. This is rather a common entity nowadays. And this is basically due to several mechanism. One is that if due to any cause the left ventricle is dilated, then the cooptation, normal cooptation, despite being normal mitral valve apparatus, there may be MR, like the case on the left side. And if you are looking in the middle part, here of the one ventricle is infected. And as a result of this, there is dysfunction of the papillary muscle. There is tethering of the leaflet leading to eccentric MR. And on the right side, 
this is also an interesting case in case of long standing atrial fibrillation the left atria may be so dilated that there may be loss of cooperation of the normal functioning leaflets as a result there will be uh, mr regarding secondary mr this is an example of secondary mr you are seeing in the shot that the posterior wall is akinetic virtually so there is papillary muscle dysfunction and also mr this is an example of a 15 year old boy with dilated cardiomyopathy just encountered few days back and here this secondary mr is due to the dilatation of the ring this is an example of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and we all know that in case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the valve itself may be abnormal and sometimes the valve may be normal but the valve motion may be abnormal due to the presence of significant systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve the next important thing is to assessment of the hemodynamic impact of mitral regurgitation we are especially concerned with the left ventricular end systolic diameter left ventricular ejection fraction and the pulmonary natal systolic pressure and the cutoff if left ventricular ejection fraction if less than 60 this is abnormal in case of severe mr and the dimension if more than systolic dimension more than 40 this is this is indicative of dilating left ventricle and also psp cutoff is 15 millimeter mercury why are we interested in just regarding the timing of surgery the important thing is that in case of severe mitral degradation it is bound to progress if untreated and ultimately uh, the main thing is that over the course of time there will be left ventricular dilatation left ventricular dysfunction patient may be symptomatic and at the last uh, thing is that the patient ultimately die so the best is to intervene before the starting of de decompensation so we have to be specially interested regarding this on the right side you are seeing that in case of early or the less severe mr mild to moderate mr the prognosis over the course of years is relatively bad, better but whenever we are dealing with three or four the prognosis actually is quite gloomy so we have to do something that is early so deciding upon surgical management we have to consider several important is having chronic or acute mr whether he is symptomatic or symptomatic and the next important thing is to severity severe mr surgery is indicated regarding etiology for primary mr the indication of surgery is more straightforward but for secondary mr this is more controversial regarding hemodynamics ventricular dimensions are quite important and also ejection fraction if the ejection fraction is very very low then the prognosis is very bad and that the patient may not be benefited by surgery current concept is that we have to advise for earlier surgery and the repair and corda sparing mitral valve surgery is the state of the art uh, technique nowadays advocated carpenter classification i am not going into details but it will help in differentiation between the primary and secondary mr surgery is indicated in all patients and surgery is indicated for selected asymptomatic patients with left ventricular systolic dysfunction normal ventricular systolic function if repair is feasible and normal left ventricular function with atrial fibrillation pulmonary systolic pressure if elevated or left atrial dilatation here are the speak in the same way surgery preferred rupture mitral valve congenital anomaly involving the mitral valve with big impact like left mitral valve will fade supramitral leak and parachute deformity of the mitral valve the first and foremost thing is to ensure guideline directed medical treatment for patients and refer to surgery only in selected patients like those who are having surgery for other indications or having left ventricular systolic infarction and the uh, uh, trans uh, venous end to end repair of the mitral valve is feasible in case of particular function, but there is significant annular function, or there is a loophole that if the heart should be benefited by surgery, then he or she can be shifted for surgery. So, my take home message is that in the uh, main cause of mitral degradation may be chronic traumatic heart disease though and for oxygen reparative surgery may not be indicated in these patients uh, rather 
replacement, maybe the state of the art technique, surgical repair of maternal fungi is still in inference in Bangladesh, and transcutaneous uh, interventions are in yet to develop in Bangladesh. With this, I like to thank you all.